Hey guys, Richard Scanton, Remount Horsemanship. Beautiful day out here in North Carolina, except for the flies. The flies seem to be really coming out in droves the past couple of days. Um, this horse here is a, a pretty well-bred Westphalen. This is my first time even putting a halter on the horse. I was at a clinic yesterday and the owner came down and dropped the horse off. Never seen the horse worked, spoke to the owner briefly and one of this horse's major issues, the owner says, is that the horse bolts when she's working the horse online and the horse has sticky shoulders online. She said it's a little bit better under saddle, but understandably, she said she probably doesn't push her horse as hard under saddle as she does when she's riding him. So some things that I did kind of to kind of prevent some things, kind of mitigate some things. When someone tells me they got a bolting horse, uh, just to kind of help set myself up for success, I'll get a longer line. So I got a nice long rope on my, on my horse. So that's gonna help me get some leverage on my horse if the horse does bolt. That way I can kind of, you know, sit on my rope and put a real big umph into maybe stopping a bolting horse really teach them that they're meeting a fence post and that halter does mean something. And then another thing that I do on horses that kind of have an issue with bolting is I won't tie my halters as, as, as high. I won't tie them as tight. I'll tie them a little bit looser so that the halter stays a little bit lower on that nose. I might not need to do that, but sometimes it can give us a little bit more leverage extending that uh, halter down the tip of their nose a little bit. So, first time I've seen this horse, you guys now know as much about this horse as I do. So we'll kind of see, see what we got here. I don't know if this horse has ever seen a flag in his life. Let them sniff it if they want. Anytime I'm introducing something new to a horse, I'll allow them the opportunity to sniff it. If they don't sniff it, that's fine. They don't have to sniff it. Kind of start at that nose, work my way down that neck. Anytime you're dealing with long ropes, be very aware of coils in the rope. Stepping over the rope, make sure that the rope doesn't get caught around your legs. Kind of rope 101 type stuff. Good. And I'm just simply checking this horse out this is our very first date I don't know nothing about him I keep calling him her it's a I keep calling her a him it's definitely a her all right step back over my rope and kind of check her out on this side good you guys can't see it but she's got a little little worried look on her face so, you know, I would not say this horse is totally fine with what I'm doing. I'm just kind of reading, reading her body. I'll ask her forward. I'll lead her forward. And then I might ask her forward here. See if she can step over that rope. Feel that rope around her legs. All right, that ain't bad. Okay, she sped up. So I'm going to see if I can't just kind of walk back behind. Okay, so that's good. I just kind of drifted back behind those hips. She yielded the hips. That's good. I like that. For a horse that bolts or to kind of stop the forward motion of any, any horse that's really trying to get away from you, you really need two things working for you. One, they have to be yielding from the halter and they have to yield the hips when we ask them. So here I'm kind of asking her to get her shoulders out. And I'm not really playing horse any different than, than, okay, so right there. Firmed up a little bit on her. See if she'll take her nose away again. That's not bad. I'm not treating this horse really any different than another horse. I just might be a little bit more cautious of her kind of taking her nose and, and taking off with it. Okay, not bad. What I'll do is I'll kind of shorten my lead rope up here. I'll pick my left hand up, ask her for her hips. Okay, good. If that's the worst bolt this horse gives me, well, boy, we got it made. Because that ain't no thing but a chicken wing. Gonna lead her, I'm gonna drive her nose out. Drive her nose, her neck, and then her shoulders will go out. <laughs> her feet have to follow her nose. Her nose has to follow pressure, whether the pressure's from the flag, the halter, my hands, 
definitely for my reins. Her nose has to follow that pressure and then her feet have to follow her nose. Slide my left hand down that lead rope. I'm gonna pick it straight up. Ask her for her hips. All right, piece of cake. Almost like we're cooking with gas now, huh? Ask her to back up. Just add some life and energy down that lead rope. Life and energy in my body. Give me something. All right. Shoulders are going to the right. Drive those shoulders out. I'm purposefully not keeping this horse close to me. I'm purposefully letting her kind of drift out. One, to kind of see what she does. And two, so that if she does do something, then I do have some leverage on her. All right, slide my left hand down that lead rope, ask her for those hips. I'm gonna step in here, bump that nose. So if I slide my hand down that lead rope and I pick it up and that steady pressure ain't working, then I'll step in towards as I bump the rope with my, uh, bump the rope with my hand. So if she's ignoring that steady pressure, <coughs> you gotta feel some rhythmic pressure. Steady pressure here, asking her to go to the right. She kind of throws a little fit like that. I don't really care. I'm just gonna make a brick wall on the left-hand side and I'm gonna say, hey, you gotta go to the right. Slide my left hand down, pick it straight up, ask her for her hips. Slide my right hand down that rope, ask her for her hips. That's all you gotta do. When they ask for hips, all you gotta do is stand still. See if I can't work on that back up a little bit. Get some life down that rope. A Wally Whopper if I need to. There's a step. Bring some life into that rope. A Wally Whopper if I need to. It's a weight shift and a foot. <coughs> nice little looking shoe there. Lead her with my left. Drive the nose, drive the neck, drive those shoulders. Kind of got in a power position there, power position there. Step over my rope, get him out of the coils. That a girl. Bump her up, ask her for her hips. So when a horse is real, you know, she's, she's pretty emotional. Um, what I probably wouldn't do is let an emotional horse just run around in circles around me. If they're running around in a circle around me, then their emotions are really jacked up. They're running around. And that running around in a circle is just kind of them taking their feet and their mind and just running with it. So if they get running real hard, then I'm gonna take the hips away. If I take the hips away and they automatically think go the opposite direction, well, I'll take their hips away again. Take their hips away pause I'll hesitate if I can before I ask them to go off in the opposite direction I'll ask for their hips nice looking to you there I'll ask for the hips I'll put in a hesitation rock that weight back rock that weight back give me one there you go another step give me another step give me one more there we go so hesitation stop rock that weight back drive those shoulders out going off the other way. But I'm not gonna let her just kind of careen around me. She's gonna get a little bit emotional right there. Take her hips away. Thank you. Back her up. She's thinking go to the left, my left. I want her to think back up. Gotta free the feet up. Thank you. Then I'll send her off to the left. Open that left door, leading hand, nose, neck, shoulders. If she'll maintain this gait, I'm totally fine. If she speeds up, I'll take her hips away. If she bolts, I'll be coming an effective brick wall and stop her. I like that. I didn't ask for that, but she sought, sought me for some comfort. She, instead of speeding up and getting emotional about it, she's like, hey, what if I tried something different? What if I just kind of came in here, kind of stopped, looked at him? Might give her a little rub there. All right, lead her back out. Ask her for those hips. Nice, lead her over to the right. Now she's a bit worried about the, um, like there, give me your hips. 
Why don't we just knock that stuff off? We don't need you doing that stuff. Uh, she's a bit bothered about the flag. That's one reason why I like to use flags is because it can bother a horse. But if I can cause the horse to move in a relaxed manner with my flag, you know, with it flapping and making the noise that a flag does, then I'm just kind of getting two birds with one stone because I'm also building their confidence. Step in here, ask for the hips. Thank you, ma'am. Block the right. Little bit of pressure, go left. So just kind of little mental redirects. So you're kind of thinking about leaving. How about you just kind of think about settling? Pick that line up, pick that line up, send her back to the left. She wants to move her feet. That's fine, I want her to move her feet. I want to have life in the feet, so I have something to direct. So I'll allow her to move her feet. I'm not gonna make her stand still, but I will cause her to kind of move how I'm looking for how I want her to move. Good, step in here, good. Good. Push those shoulders out a little bit. As she's going around me there, I can just kind of add a little bit of pressure with the flag and my body angle. So I'm kind of pointing my body towards, thank you. I was kind of pointing my, my energy and my intention, my shoulders towards the point of her hip. Open that door to the right. Thank you, I didn't need a, I didn't need a driver that time. I like that. So I'm kind of focusing on the point of the hip. Front door is wide open, but I want the hips. I want her going forward, kind of stepping under a little bit more, under her hips like that. There's several ways that I can do that. Got my body in tension aimed at those hips. I'm not letting her zip the line. Thanks for doing that, keep going. I'm not gonna let her zip the line out of my hand, so I'm kind of holding firm with my right hand so she can hit that fence post if need be. And I'm kind of adding some pressure right there. Kind of adding some pressure right there. Kind of adding a little bit more pressure right there. Take those hips away. The exact same thing I would do under saddle. She kind of started doing that stuff. Well, I'd probably take her hips away, get that situation under control. And then guess what? Well, we're gonna go back to work. Holding the left line steady, left hand steady. Direct my pressure at those hips. There, I like that. I like that because she, see there, she slowed down. Step in towards those hips, she slowed down. I'll take that, I appreciate that. Thanks, honey. So two times now, going to the right, out of her right eye. Those are the times where she kind of act, act it up a little bit. So just a little mental note for me. Uh, do a little bit more on that right eye. Ain't no different than, than most horses. Right eye is a little bit different than their left eye. I like that. So what I'm doing is I'm getting control of those hips and kind of causing her to stop, turn, face, and wait. Once my stop, turn, face, and wait is pretty solidified and it's good, then I don't always continue that. Once I have it good, well, I can move on to some more engaging exercises. Open up the right door, lead, get that neck, get those shoulders. Always being aware of loops in your rope. I'll kind of flick my rope out every now and then to try to get some coils out of it. That's not bad. That's not bad. Kind of bring my flag in, see what she does. All right, all right. Speeding up, getting emotional. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna, unless she kind of kicks up a little bit, I'm gonna keep my right hand steady and, and I'm gonna kind of keep pressure on those hips. And I'm gonna say, if you get into it, <laughs> if you get into a situation where you get really, really bothered, how about you kind of change gears and quit thinking, go faster and engaging those hips and why don't you switch gears and start thinking about maybe disengaging those hips and start kind of thinking like a partner. 
open that right door, drive the front end, hold that right hand steady. There you, okay, perfect, I like that. Very minimal, minimal pressure, and she yielded those hips for me. <clears throat> All right, not too shabby. Ask for the hips. Ask for the hips. I'm just trying to walk around to her hips and have her stand still. She kind of sees this flag coming around her and she's kind of like, whoa, I don't know about that big scary orange flag you got there, buddy. Block the left, block the right, block the left, block the right, block the left. So all I want you to do is stand still and then I'll retreat. <laughs> if I block the right and I block the left like I was doing, then I was saying, yeah, it's kind of hot over there. Oh, it's kind of hot over there. But right here in the middle, that's where you want to be. That's where we want you. <clears throat> that wasn't really an escape. That was kind of a drift. So my... Uh, my reaction to kind of what she did is going to match the energy that she put into it. She just kind of thought about leaving, so I just kind of drifted with her. It ain't really a big deal. Good. Good. All right. So before I ever start talking to the shoulders, I mean, I am kind of talking to the shoulders, uh, making sure the shoulders stay out of my, out of my bubble. Uh, if I have a really, really pushy horse, uh, I can make a bubble like, okay, as long as you're not between the end of that stick and me, we're good. We'll get along just fine. But if you bring any body part closer than the end of that stick, then we might have a problem. And then I might make some pressure, might kind of do the chicken dance, make some commotion and, and drive them out. So I have been talking to the shoulders because every time I send her, I am kind of asking her to move those shoulders. But before I really start doing any shoulder talking to the horse, I will get control of the hips. Nice. I'll ask for a backup. I'll try to get that backup pretty good. I mean, it's not good by any stretch of the imagination at all right now. But I'll get the hips and then I'll get the back up, and then I'll really start working on the shoulders. The reason I want the hips is for a safety issue. The reason I want the hips is like for a horse that kind of wants to bolt. I need control of the hips. The reason I need the back up is because in order for this horse to move her shoulders, she has to get the weight off of her shoulders. And that could be a very big uh, communication error with the owner, is maybe they're asking this horse to move their shoulders and the horse's weight is set up properly. So if the weight's on the front feet, they ain't never going to move them. Or if they do move them, it's going to be very unathletic and very unbalanced. And that can really cause a horse to become emotionally distressed. Because they just have no idea what the hell we're asking them. So I'll ask for this backup. Oh, that was better backup. Lead them to the right. Drive that nose, that neck. And then come on, got to move them shoulders. Block into the left like that. Ask her for her hips. Because every time I send her, it's not like every time I send her, I'm going to just kind of have her go in a circle. I might send her in a quarter circle, take her hips. An eighth of a circle, take her hips. Five circles, and then take her hips. So when I want the hips, I got to have the hips. Work on that back up a little bit. Work on that back up a little bit. Give her plenty of opportunity to back up. Always start out nice and slow. You can throw some coils down that rope if you want to. There's lots of different ways to do it. Thank you. Leader to the left. Nice. Ask her for the hips. Of course, she kind of takes off. Ask her for the hips. Just kind of simmer down, old girl. Just wait, wait for me there. Lead her off to the right. A little bit of pressure to the right. Ask her for her hips. Lead her to the right. A little bit of pressure. <clears throat> and by me just picking up that flag and her 
yielding to it was very nice. My goal is not to have to drive my horse with my flag or my stick and string. My goal is to hopefully get him sending off like that. And it might shape up right now and it might not. Flexion, release. There. Lead, guide, yeah, maybe I got one step off of, off of my fill down the lead rope. And then I brought in, my, brought in my flag. Keep going though. Keep going. What I'm liking about that little circle, and I'll ask her to keep going again. What I liked about that circle is she's keeping a little bit more slack in that rope between the halter and my hand. I'm not even really closing my fingers on the, uh, on the lead rope. And I won't even close my fingers on the lead rope and I ought to just be able to step in here and give me your hips. All right, so let's progress. We're already doing much better. Old girl's doing good. All right, now before I get to really asking her for those shoulders, kind of before I start to isolate the shoulders, make sure she's halfway okay with this flag. There you go, you got this. You got this, that's on the left eye. It's that right eye that she's a little bit more boogery about things. You got this. Anytime I'm with a new horse, anytime I'm with a jumpy horse, I'll stand. If I had to put an angle to it at a 45 degree angle off of their shoulder. So if they were to strike, hopefully they'd miss me. And I'm far enough up front that if they tried to cow kick me, they couldn't because I'm too far in front. So I'm a little bit protected from a paw, from a strike, and from a cow kick. And a cow kick means, uh, you know, cows can kick around a dang corner seems like sometimes but if i was standing right here she could very easily just bring that right hind up and wallop me and i'd rather not have that happen today good <clears throat> to help with the backup i can put my hand on that halter knot thumb down the first thing i'm gonna do is bring my hand up like that i will reward either a backup or a flexion in the pole which means her head comes kind of vertical to the to the ground if that doesn't do anything, then I can wiggle that hand left and right. I'm not pulling back, I'm not pushing backwards. I'm just wiggling left and right. And I'll reward the feet, I'll reward the flexion, either one. There you go. Come on this side so y'all can see it. Thumb down, halter knot level with the ground. She gave me that foot. Halter knot, thumb down, level with the ground. She gave me her flexion, not too shabby. And down, up, wiggle, 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 wiggle. I have to always say, or I have to say also, that this horse <clears throat> has been through at least three different trainers before she came to me. And I know several of the trainers and they're pretty good hands. So I'm not, uh, and I haven't talked to him about the horse and I'm not going to, but uh, they had some issues and they couldn't work through them. And then they said, well, call this guy. A lot of times I get horses in that are, I'm like their last stop. They kind of run the gauntlet. They go, they go through some trainers, go through, go through some trainers, and they say, oh, we'll bring them to this guy. Well, if they just brought them to me in the first place, maybe we wouldn't have these problems to begin with. But I got no control over that, and I'll gladly work with any horse that shows up at my front gate. We'll work on them, huh? So I'm wiggling left and right, just kind of making some life here. Nice, nice, nice. If her head went up when I did that, then I would wiggle left and right more, and I would not pull backwards. Anytime I'm pulling backwards, anytime I'm pulling backwards, well, the horse is probably gonna brace into you, and they're gonna brace with their head up. There's some riding techniques that you can do with your hands to kind of have them brace against a bit and, uh, and lower their head. But anytime you're pulling, that gives them something to brace on. Okay, enough of that. Get her over here. She kind of walked into me there. Get out of my space. Don't act a fool. I stay nice and calm even when I got to say, hey, little booger, get out of my space. Stay nice and calm. It doesn't matter. They just, just have to simply move out of my space. So I'll ask her to go to the left again, and I'm just going to kind of watch her shoulders, see if she rocks that weight back. And if she doesn't, 
Yeah, that, that, don't be doing that stuff. Ask her to move those shoulders. That was a little bit better. She, that was, okay, that was better. Ask her to move those shoulders. If those shoulders come into me, which means that, I say, nope, get those shoulders out. And then I'll ask her for her hips because she's kind of thinking squirt out. So when I say she's bringing those shoulders in, she's not, that was a lot better. She rocked her weight back. If this was her head, she rocked her weight back and then swung her shoulders out. So if your horse was on a perfect circle and your horse did this maneuver very, very well, if the horse was on a circle, the hind feet will be the diameter of the circle. So you back your horse up, the horse stops, and then they kind of swing their shoulders out. Their hind feet can stay on where they were, and they bring the front end out in line with their hind feet, and then that can make your circle. So that's kind of what I mean about they're kind of bringing them shoulders in and pushing me with those shoulders. <clears throat> Leader, guide her shoulders went out. I like that. We'll try that going to the right. Rock her weight back. Give me a backup. It's never, never bad to work on a backup. Do something. Lead. Stepped out very nicely there. I like that. All right. Horses. Talking to the owner, the horse is reactive uh, to things. To I, I would have to assume, because I only know as much as you guys know about this horse, the horse is very reactive to things. So I'm going to guess uh, commotion to life to maybe flags. Um, okay, maybe not too bad. Okay, that's not really bad at all. Maybe take what was scaring her, rubbing her with it. Hey, that's not that's not bad take the hips away take the hips away she's now she's got that rope around her legs um well that's that's too bad <laughs> i'm not gonna i mean I'll, I'll i will take the rope from being around her legs but that's something that she has to get used to i'm not gonna freak out uh because she has the rope wrapped around her legs that's something she's got to get got to get used to and when she settles down well then i can help her in the heat of the moment i'm not going to be i mean i'm not going to dive down there and take the rope from around her legs that's a really good way to get kicked as she's doing this i'll just rub her with that flag until she comes to a stop at a girl might ask her to lower her head at a girl kind of show her some relaxation <laughs> Step in here. A horse, a lot of times, a horse can handle things when they're standing still, right? So when you're standing still, a lot of horses, you can uh, you can rope them. That rope's around her foot again, tough luck. Um, a lot of times, you can rope a horse, you can crack a bull whip around a horse, you can a flag around a horse when the horse is standing still. But as soon as there's some life in their feet and they're kind of moving, they're like, oh, geez, that thing's gonna get me. So what I can do is not get closer with the flag. I can just kind of keep this commotion with the flag and then when she decides to stop i'll just kind of retreat say hey let's go let's go over here a little bit <clears throat> and then just kind of stand here move my flag a little bit walk up to her rubber with it i oh, any horse any horse you ought to be able to stand next to him and work the flag around him you ought to be able to stand next to him and put a saddle pad on them. You ought to, ought to be able to stand next to them and put a, uh, a horse blanket on them. Keep the, keep the pressure till she stops or commotion. Good. Make some commotion over here. I'm not focused on her. I'm not really even thinking about her. I'm just kind of walking. I'm just some weird guy with a flat hat and an orange flag. Yep, that's all I am. And ain't nothing gonna hurt you, and ain't nobody gonna eat you. Life's gonna be good. It's all gonna be good. Ask her to move off. I brought that flag in because she kind of popped her uh, ribs towards me, and I want her bent around me. 
So I just brought that flag in and said, hey, get those ribs out a little bit. You're, you're within my bubble. Don't be popping my bubble. Make some commotion. All right, not bad. Not bad at all. And you'll notice that I'm kind of walking up to her differently than when I was introducing the flag to her. So I'm kind of walking up to her with a little bit more energy. My intention's still down and I'm not meaning or intending for her to move her feet, but my energy's up a little bit. So she has to start to kind of learn uh, the difference between energy and intention. Right now, this is just, just energy. She ought to be able to handle this. She ought to be able to handle all this. Sometimes you'll be doing this with a horse and they'll kind of bring their head over your over you. Just blah, block them. Even if you're five foot tall, you can get six foot tall by sticking your hand in the air. Ask her to walk off. See how she, she just bumped me with her shoulder? Okay, be aware of those things. Get the shoulder that you just haphazardly pushed into my bubble and get that shoulder out. Good, nice, very nice. Okay, get those barrel out. Oh no, she got that rope around her foot. That's too bad. As long as her nose is towards me, ah, as long as her nose is towards me, I'm just gonna kinda keep following her with that flag. When she stops, I'll rub on her. First thing I'm gonna do is drive those shoulders out. That was really good. I picked that flag up. She's like, yeah, I'm not really that scared of it. I might just stop. Cause he's gonna rub on me and he's gonna take those flies off of me and scratch me where I can't scratch myself. And my pasture buddy don't scratch me there. He just kicks me. Good. Step in here, ask for the hips, bring the shoulders through. I was working the left eye, move those shoulders. Now it's time to work that right eye. Leader. Maybe work this flag a little bit. Good. Perfect. You know, a lot of a lot of times it's a mindset. A lot of times it's like, hey, my horse can't do any wrong. And not in the mindset like, oh my my poor little floof, fluffy, floofy. My little pony princess unicorn can't do anything wrong. It's in, it's in the mindset of, yeah, you gave me an answer. It might not have been the answer I was looking for. And there's answers that are righter than, than the answer you gave me, but it wasn't a wrong answer. It was at least an answer, which can tell me what to do different. I'll just kind of drift with her. Good. You can see she's kind of cockeyed. She's uh, She's got that right hind out and the left front out. I might ask her to square herself up a little bit. Just back her up. Back her up till that uh, right hind's under under a little bit more. There, I like to keep my horses somewhat, somewhat squared when they're at the standstill. There's no, there's no maneuver that I want them to do on her saddle where they're not gonna be balanced. So why not teach them to be balanced on the ground? Anytime you're working with them, just draw attention to their, them being square, them being balanced. Like earlier when I pushed those shoulders out, say, hey, that shoulder's into me. You're pushing into me. Why don't you push that shoulder out? Nice little licks and chews on this one. All right, send her back out. <clears throat> I'll gradually increase the commotion that I apply to a horse, but I always... Uh, prepare a horse for like if you're on a trail ride she's trotting around pretty nice here like if you're on a trail ride uh, and you spook a deer or you you know uh, covey a quell jump up jump up and spook your horse or heaven forbid you're riding in the woods and <laughs> a bunch of turkeys that were roosting in the trees fly down from the top that scares the living bejeebers out of you I tell you what but I like to get my horses prepared for that I'm gonna wait for her to come towards it then the pressure dies. All right. Uh, not too bad. Not too bad. Trotting around, everything's just fine. She's licking and chewing on the end of that line there. 
She's like, all right, I got this. Ain't nothing happening. Doot, 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 doot. She's got to come towards me. And then the pressure releases. And then we just go right back at it. Now her emotions are up a little bit more, and that's fine. I have no problem getting a horse's emotions up, and I have no problem, in fact, I need to get their emotions up, and I need to teach them that I can bring those emotions down. Here come the quail. Come toward, there you go, come towards me. There, I like it. So that's not too bad at all. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start working on isolating those shoulders. She walked forward, I'm gonna put her back. Why don't you just learn how to park yourself? Not park out, but give your horse a parking spot. She's leaning out with that right front. Maybe you ought to bring that right front back a little bit. Maybe one more step. Closer, ah, okay, that's even better than where it, when, where it was. All right, so now we're gonna talk about these shoulders that are really sticky. Like I said before, first thing I'm gonna work on is weight back, I gotta get that weight back. I'll kinda get her like that. Um, the weight has to go back before I can even think about moving the shoulders. So one way, and there's lots of ways to skin a cat, this is just a way to do it, is I'll just kinda stand right here Flag in my left hand, lead rope in my right hand, and I might use my right hand and ask her to rock her weight back. And I'll add little bumps, and I'll push her nose so it stays straight. Okay? Bump, give me, the, there. Steady, bump, thank you. Steady pressure, bump, give me that left. Thank you. Okay, so now we're talking, let's shift your weight back. Now I'm gonna ask her to, Rock her weight back, and I can use the flag, flag end of the flag, or the handle end of my flag, or my hands, and I can actually put my hands on her and kind of say, move your nose. In fact, maybe we'll start there. Rock the weight back, fingers on her nose, move your shoulders. Good. I don't know if you guys saw it, but when their weights rocked back and they're yielding their shoulders appropriately, the foot closest to you that you're moving away from you needs to step in front of the far foot. So the near foot needs to step in front of the far foot. And she did that pretty good. She got kind of heavy there. Bring that other foot up. Thank you. Kind of set her up for the turn. Rock that weight back. Ask her for her. There. 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 Now if she ever gets heavy on me, there's a few things that I can do if she gets heavy on me and if she starts leaking forward. I can drive more with my left. Okay, get tall, drive more. Okay, get tall. Drive more with my left hand. Keep driving until she does that, steps over. Or I can also continue to add pressure or bumps if I needed to to help keep the weight rock back. Because eventually, I'm not gonna wanna, that's nice, I'm not gonna wanna bump her back. Eventually, when I come up here and I say, hey, let's move your shoulders, she'll say, oh, I'll move my shoulders. Thank you. But actually she'll say, oh, you want me to move my shoulders? Well, hey, why don't, I, <laughs> why don't I shift my weight back and allow you to move my shoulders? But sometimes you have to help them get that weight back before we ask them. Same thing here. <clears throat> Same thing, different side. Kind of bump that weight back. Don't move your head towards me. Bump your weight back. Don't bring your head towards me. Once that weight's back, then I can start driving. This is the right side. This is the side that's kind of giving us a little bit more trouble than the left side. Very ugly, but she gave me that near foot in front of the far foot. So we'll try it again. Back up, weight back. Push, drive. Steady pressure ain't working, then I gotta turn in driving pressure. Move that, move that, like that. But don't go forward on me. Keep that weight rock back, like that, but keep your weight rock back. There's the weight, there's the weight, there's the foot. All right, so 
Well, geez, that's the first session with this horse. Um, I didn't see really anything too crazy that happened. Um, that doesn't mean nothing's not gonna happen. Maybe, maybe I've been doing things a little bit different than, uh, than the other trainers have been doing. Maybe I just approached things a little bit differently than maybe they did. I don't know. I'm not gonna make any guesses or assumptions, but that's the end of my first session. And uh, it all seems, seems to be working out pretty good. So I'll make a few more videos of this, and then I'll get some riding, riding videos for you guys. And uh, we'll just kind of go from there. So thanks for watching. See ya.